Hello and in this video we will be going over A-level physics specifically for Edexcel. We'll take a look at ray diagrams and the power of the lens equation in this video. So specification point 76 states that we need to be able to use ray diagrams to trace the path of light through a lens and locate the position of an image. And specification point 77 states that we need to be able to use the equation for the power of the lens which is given as 1 over the focal length. So before we kind of move on, we need to recap what lenses are. Lenses are optical devices which work by changing the direction of light. This process is known as refraction. There are two types of lenses that need to be considered, and these lenses are converging convex lenses and diverging concave lenses. So as we can see, we have the following image on the left-hand side of a converging lens. We have our incident parallel rays of light entering the lens, which is represented by the following blue arrows. And as these rays of light leave the lens, they refract, change direction, and converge onto a given point, which is referred to as our focal point. Now, this vertical dotted line going down the center of the converging lens is defined as the lens axis. And the distance between the focal point and the lens axis would be referred to as the focal length. For a converging lens, the focal point is positive as it is in front of the lens, and it would produce a real image. Now taking a look at the diagram on the right hand side, we see a picture of a diverging lens. So we have our incident rays of light which are parallel to the principal axis and they enter into our lens and therefore refract by changing direction and they all diverge out. And to kind of locate the focal point for a diverging lens we need to use dotted lines which represent virtual rays. And basically if we draw these dotted lines back each and every single one of them will converge onto a given point, which would be referred to as our focal point. And for a diverging lens, the focal point would always be behind the lens, and that would be where the image is formed. So, moving on, we now need to understand how to draw these ray diagrams. So, for a converging lens, we need to apply the following steps. Step 1. We need to draw a parallel ray of light. So basically, a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis, passes through the lens and the focal point on the other side. Number two, we need to draw a focal ray. A ray that passes through the focal point emerges parallel to the principal axis on the other side of the lens. Step number three, a center ray. A ray of light that passes through the center of the lens with no change in direction. And to draw ray diagrams for concave diverging lenses, the following steps have to be applied. So we just apply the parallel ray, basically a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis passes and emerges as though it were coming from the focal point. Number two, a focal ray. A ray that is going towards a focal point on the other side of the lens emerges parallel to the principal axis. Step number three, the center ray. A ray of light that passes through the center of the lens with no change in direction. Now, you don't necessarily have to use all three steps. You can only use two of these steps and still be able to determine the location of the image. So this will make more sense as I explain it on the next slide. So as we can see we have our first diagram, diagram number one, and we have a big black arrow which basically represents our object. So we have our first ray of light represented by the red arrow which is parallel to the principal axis and it moves towards the lens and basically as the light ray leaves the lens it refracts, changes direction, intersects the focal point and just keeps moving on and then number two we have our center ray or our ray of light which starts at the top of our object arrow and intersects the center of the lens without any change in direction and just continues all through and we have our third ray of light which is represented by the black arrow which starts at the top of the object and moves and intersects the focal point before the lens and then once the ray of light enters the lens it then refracts and changes direction and that ray of light then moves out parallel to the principal axis and it intersects the other two given rays of light. And at the point where all three rays of light intersect would be the point that the image is formed, which is referred to as the focal point. And we draw another arrow, so in this case I have drawn a green arrow to represent where the image would be formed. And since the green arrow is larger than the black object arrow, we can say that our image is magnified real and inverted as the arrow is on the opposite side or is upside down. 
Now taking a look at diagram 2, we see a diverging lens. So we have our first ray of light, which is represented by the following red arrow, and that uh, ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, and as it enters the lens, it then causes a refraction, so the light ray would diverge outwards as it leaves the lens. Then we have our second ray of light, which is from the top of our black object arrow, and that would continue on straight ahead, intersecting the center of the lens without any change in direction. And basically we have our green dotted lines, which are our virtual rays, and we trace those back to see where it would intersect with other rays of light. And at the point of intersection, that would be where the image is formed. And that image is represented by this small green arrow in diagram 2. Now, since this green arrow is smaller than the object arrow, we would say that the image is reduced, and it is virtual, and it is also upright as it is facing the same way as the object arrow. Now, if we take a look at diagram 3, we have the converging lens again. However, this time the object is being moved closer to the lens. So, we draw our parallel ray of light, which is parallel to the principal axis. As it enters the lens, it then causes refraction to occur. Therefore, as the ray of light leaves the lens, it then intersects one of the given focal points after the lens. And we have our center ray of light, basically, which is our ray of light that intersects the center of the lens and continues with no change in direction. Now, however, since these rays of light haven't converged, we need to draw dotted rays of light or virtual rays of light going back to see at what point they converge. So the point that they converge would be where the image is formed. So for this case, it would be a virtual image, and that virtual image is represented by the following green arrow, which is longer than the black object arrow. Therefore, we can conclude that this image is magnified, virtual, and upright. Now moving on, we need to have a look at the power of the lens. So, the power of the lens tells us how much the lens can refract light. The higher the power, the more the lens can refract or will refract light. So, the power has the unit diopters, with f being the focal length, which has the unit in meters. And we have a series of example questions to go through. So, question number one. A lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. What is its power in diopters? So, basically, we use p equals 1 over f. And we need to convert 10 centimeters into meters, so we do 10 divided by 100, which is 0 0.1, and we do 1 divided by 0 0.1, which equals 10 diopters of power. Question number two, what is the focal length of a 100 diopter lens? So now it's just a case of rearranging our formula so that we make the focal length the subject of the formula. So the focal length is given as 1 over the power. So we do 1 divided by 100, and therefore we get a focal length of 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.01, yes. In question number 3, we have a lens which has a power of minus 4.33 diopters. Calculate the focal length and state what type of lens it is. So, we use the formula focal length equals 1 over power, and we substitute in the given values, so we do 1 over minus 4.33, which gives a focal length of negative 0.23 and we know that this would be a diverging lens as the focal point for a diverging lens is always negative whereas the focal point for a converging lens is always positive. Thank you all for watching, I hope this video has made sense and cleared any questions anyone's had on ray diagrams and the power of a lens equation. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.